Good evening. Good evening. It's good to see each and one of you here this evening on this first midweek Advent service. Our theme of our services is going to be the Trinity. We're going to do it one article at a time. So the first article, the Father, then the Son, then the Holy Spirit. So tonight we're going to focus on the Father. And we begin our worship by singing our opening hymn, 504, Father Most Holy. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, I shall not be. 
be afraid. What can flesh do to me? And God, whose word I praise, and the Lord, whose word I praise, and God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can man do to me? Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. For you have delivered my soul from death, Yes, my feet from falling. That I may walk before God in the light of life. Our Old Testament reading comes to us from the book of Genesis, the first chapter and the first three verses of chapter 2. And our Old Testament account is the creation account. And listen carefully to how God created our universe and our world. Hear how God was pleased with everything he had made. And notice how this is the basis of our confession of our Heavenly Father. We read, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse, and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters were they, that were gathered together he called seas, and God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit, in which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. 
And let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the water swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarm, according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things, and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the livestock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, Everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading comes to us from the fourth chapter of Galatians, the first seven verses. God had made a perfect world, but as humans we rebelled against the Creator. Now Paul reminds us that we have been adopted by our Heavenly Father to be his children. And this adoption comes through his son, Jesus. Paul writes, I mean that the heir, as long as he is a child, is no different from a slave, though he is the owner of everything. But he is under guardians and managers until the date set by his father. In the same way, we also, when we were children, were enslaved to the elementary principles of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you're no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as we continue with the Alleluia verse. the truth about our Heavenly Father. He's the one we should truly fear. He's the one who will reveal all things. He knows when every bird falls to the ground. He has every hair on our head numbered. We read. So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. 
What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We continue with our next hymn, Children of the Heavenly Father, 725. Please be seated. And then I'm going to give you something to be sorry about. 
again, could be something similar to our text. Have no fear of them. Do not fear those who can only kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Don't be afraid unless you want God to give you something you should really be afraid of. Now that doesn't sound like the God we want to worship. God who gave you life could one day just decide to take it away. Some of us are afraid of things. And God laughs at the things that make us afraid. Because the only thing God says we should fear is himself. And this is what makes our relationship with our Heavenly Father both beautiful and dysfunctional. By acknowledging that there is a God who gave you life, that means there's a God who can take your life away. By realizing that there's a God who is in control means that you are not in control. By realizing there's nothing to fear more than the Heavenly Father can make a lot of people I know feel uneasy and make people rethink their status and relationship with God in the first place. Because the fact of the matter is to acknowledge that a Heavenly Father means to acknowledge that we're not really in control of much of anything. We can't give ourselves life and we shouldn't be able to say when our life should end. I mean, we want to be in control, right? And yet, we can't determine the weather. We can't add one second to our lifespan. I mean, pay attention to all the things that happen around you. None of us have been able to change the news stories recently. And we are almost powerless against an invisible virus. Or how about this? We don't even know how many hairs are on our head. The fact of the matter is, we want to be in control. We want to be the Lord of our existence, but we aren't, and the fact of the matter is, we never can be. I've learned personally, the more I try to, to tighten my control over something, the more it slips out between my fingers. Contrast that with our Heavenly Father. Jesus says that not even one single sparrow falls to the ground without the Heavenly Father knowing about it. Our Heavenly Father loves you so much, He really does have every hair on your head numbered. He knows how many leaves are still lying on the ground in your backyard. He knows how many deer are still running through your fields. Our Heavenly Father knows His creation. He knows the tiniest of details lovingly created this world, this universe, this life around you, and of course, you. He created something to love, and it's you that are the peak of his creative work. But the fact of the matter is, God's the one in control. He knows everything, and he still loves. Jesus reminds you of that truth by saying, Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. You are valued by God. So much so that he was willing to send his son into this world. He was willing to let his only son die on the cross for you. How valuable are you to God? Look to the cross of Jesus and see how truly valuable you are. 
The Creator sees His fallen creation. He sees every sin we've ever said or done or thought. He knows our weaknesses. He knows our secret temptations. And He knows that we want to be God and to be in control of everything. And yet, amazingly, He still loves you. He hasn't abandoned His creation. Instead, He redeems it. He reclaims it as His. Through His love, He reminds us that He isn't just a God to be feared. He's a God to be trusted and loved. Loved because He first loved us. Trusted because we believe that on account of Jesus, he won't throw you into the fires of hell, nor abandon you in your weakest or saddest of moments. Trusting that he will keep you in his kingdom. Trusting that all things work together for the good of those who love him. And trust that we truly are now adopted children of God forever. And our text ends with a, a final reminder that as God's redeemed children, we are to confess him before others. Now that we fear, love, and trust in God above all things, when the subject of God comes up, we don't need to fear that other person. I mean, not compared to, to what God could do. When the subject of love comes up, we can talk about the love between God and you. When trust issues are shared, you can show your trust in God even in the most dire of circumstances because you have a God that will never abandon you and who will always love you. And that's a truth that's worth sharing with others. And as we acknowledge our God in our life, on that final day, you be, will be acknowledged by the Son before the Father. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We now continue our worship by confessing our faith in the first article of the Apostles' Creed and meaning. Please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God has made me in all creatures, that he has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason and all my senses, and still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, all I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does only out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy, without any merit or worthiness in me. For all this it is my duty to thank and praise serve and obey him. This is most certainly you. We continue with our prayers. We pray to you, O Heavenly Father, for our unashamed hope in you, that sustained by the Holy Spirit, we may have joy at the advent of Christ our Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For Trinity Lutheran Church, that God would enrich his saints in every way and empower us to confess Christ to the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For Matthew, our Synod President, John, our District President, Greg, our Circuit Visitor, and all pastors and teachers in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For all Christians, that we would continue to fear, love, and trust in God above all things. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For husbands and 
wives, that they would live in love and service to each other. For fathers and mothers, that they would bring up their children in the fear and instruction of the Lord. And for all children, that honoring their parents, they would be well equipped for service to their neighbors in this life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our governing authorities, that peace and order would be preserved in our nation. For Donald, our president, Tony, our governor, our military and police, all other civil servants, as well as all newly elected officials. And for a spirit of unity and cooperation among the people of our land and the nations of the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all those in danger, trouble, sickness, or need, especially Marcy, Myron, Larry, Al, Marilyn, Helen, Karen, Helen, Jerry, John, Bridge, Joel, and Cheryl. For an end to the pandemic, that all would hope confidently in the resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For Trinity Lutheran School, that our Heavenly Father would make this a place where children could learn more about His creative work, His redeeming love, and an everlasting trust in God above all things, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Into your hands, Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Take eat. 
This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
thanks, Almighty God, that you refresh us through the salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us with the same in faith toward you and a fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and peace you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his favor on you and give you peace. Blessings to you this week. 